Labor shortages, that is one of the major crux that will impact how Canadian real estate prices are going to pan out in the following years. We just don't have enough people to build all the homes that we need, according to CMHC's latest report. And yes, this is despite higher interest rates and all the stuff that doomsayers are saying that, you know, we're going to blow up. Canada still right now has a housing shortage, regardless of how you cut it up. Stay tuned to find out how this will impact you in the next few years, because I've broken down two massive reports to give you an idea of what's going on. Now, if you are looking for some expertise on how to navigate this super confusing real estate market, and let's be real, it is super confusing. You can book a strategy call with me using the link that's on the screen right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Simply click on the date and the time that works best for you. And then when you see the prop, fill in your name, email, mobile phone number, and the question you have for me, and then we'll chat then. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Properties TV. My name is Zen, and I run a Remax brokerage in the greater Toronto area on top of making wicked real estate content for you, just like this one. Look, we already knew Ontario needs about like 1.5 million homes, give or take, according to the um, Housing Task Force Affordability Group, whatever, right, that uh, our Premier Ford put together. CMHC just did a review on this and how bad this shortage is from a labor perspective. And it's really bad. Like, it's really, really bad. So the two reports I'm going to be talking about will be available in the description below if you want to read the whole thing yourself. It's a little bit of a snoz fest, but there's some pretty cool charts that you may have a look at that I may not put in this video. Now, if you have a look at the chart over here, the best case scenario for Ontario is that we can have about a million homes. That means in less than 10 years, we're going to be short half a million homes, 500,000. Not because of government red tape, not because of pricing, but strictly because of the capacity that we have nobody to build these homes. We don't have enough like skilled tradespeople in Canada to build the amount of homes that we have. A lot of the experienced ones that I know of are actually retiring because they're boomers and they've been doing it for years. And like, honestly, have you tried finding a masonry person lately? It's almost next to impossible. It really is. Now, I can speak from my perspective too, like none of my generation, the millennials, we, none of us were told to grow up or you know, wanting to be in trades or should have been in trades, even though clearly, and I've talked about this before, they make way more money than many of the white collar jobs that you get after you go to like post-secondary. And as a nation, we're great at allowing immigration from highly educated people in or just people with tons of money, but we are not bringing anyone in who knows how to like work with their hands, which leads to a massive labor shortage, which is why we can't build enough homes. And even if miraculously the government red tape and taxes and all the other stuff go away to help create more homes, we don't have the people and the labor to build that inventory. And it's exactly what the CMHC report is talking about. Now, the lack of supply of labor means that they can charge higher price supply and demand, right? Which means higher prices for the homes, which means those prices get passed on to the homeowners, which means that it could not be affordable, even if we get to that number. This is why I'm like long-term bullish on real estate market, because there's just so many things in the system that are absolutely broken. And it seems impossible to fix at this point, unless you have massive regime change. Right? And remember, this labor shortage is going to take almost 10 years to play out. So don't think I'm super bullish in the next one or two years. You need to be able to survive holding your properties for the next one or two years to be able to benefit and reap the rewards of this five to 10 year kind of horizon for it to kind of pan out. Just understand that. Now, if you found any of this content useful, it means other people probably will as well. So make sure you spread the knowledge by smashing that like button and subscribing to the Prime Props channel so you'll know when I drop awesome content like this. And if you are in the market right now looking for some good experience and non-biased help that actually is for your own benefit, we call this fiduciary, then you can book a call with me using the link right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Now, in this report, they outlined where like these 1.5 million homes are going to be needed. And you can see over here that Peel, Toronto and York are going to be growing at massive rates. And that's where a lot of these homes are going to be. Now, if you're an investor, this is basically a treasure map of where you would want to invest long term, right? Look at where the population is going to be. And you're basically getting ahead of it. This is gold. Now, here's another interesting chart that they set out in the report. And while I'm not like fully sold on their target affordability, it does kind of give you like a baseline of how they're arriving at their number, right? 
Now, at the moment right now, Ontario is like 871,000 and it takes about 60% of the average household to in service that home, right? Household, not single person. It is very high, it is. And they're trying to get to um, the 37%, which honestly, I don't think it's gonna happen, but hypothetically, if it does, they'll make the homes like 500,000 by increasing the supply of the homes, which uh, can service all the demand. Now, in my mind, this changes not because of that, but because of amortizations and they go longer and longer, or if we have a massive wage price, but you know, I don't think that's happening. But either way, for homes to be more affordable by this metric, we need to increase the supply by 37% of currently what we could do under the business as usual. That means you have to increase capacity by 37%. Good luck with that. We don't have enough people to build these homes, even if all the other things like government line up, right? Now, the last point I wanna point out to you, and it always has been my philosophy of how I'm investing, and that's the massive density on land shortage that we have in the Golden Horseshoe, which is, you know, the thing that goes to Niagara, right? Now, this is a map I've shown many, many times before if you've been a longtime watcher of the channel. It's the Greenbelt map, and this map is from 2017, five years ago, right? All the little arrows are where there is land available to build single family homes. Keep that in mind. Everything else is likely to be condos or high density towns like back to back, right? And of all the blocks in the yellow that I can see that point out in the arrow, I can tell you a lot of them have already been built on or they've been bought and ready to build on, right? So I'll give you some examples, right? There's no land in York right now. That Markham block over here is built already. That's Greensboro. The Vaughn block is Maple, built. In Durham, those spots north of the 407 is basically North Pickering, North Ajax, and North Oshawa. Brooklyn's already been built. And there's all the stuff along the 407. That's already filled. In Peel, that's Northwest Brampton, which is already built. And some of the stuff to the east of that is Caledon, which is kind of being built and kind of being serviced right now. Then in Halton, you got Milton, that's mostly built, mad me. And there aren't many kind of pockets left available for like single family homes. And if you look at the original chart I showed you, Peel, Halton, York, Toronto, Durham are the top six in Ontario of how many homes are needed. And those five regions make up 60% of the homes needed of the 1.5 million. So if you do the math and you hold a single family home in the golden horseshoe, right? For call it, I don't know, 10 plus years. Imagine what kind of scarce asset that's gonna be. That is the key on how I've always been investing. The other key is how are you able to hold on to that type of asset through the short-term pains that we're experiencing right now. And if you want to learn how we are doing it, you can book a call with me using the link that's right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what the long-term horizon is going to be because it's all over the place, but you just have to be able to survive the short-term. And that's kind of what I've been preaching in the last few videos. You got to survive the short-term so you can benefit from the long-term benefits. Anyways, until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one? Oh, you know what? This one's good too. Ooh, this one's really good. You know what? Just watch them both.